We know that all overlanding trips can't be rainbows and butterflies like you see on all the videos on YouTube. And our last trip was a real reminder of just that. So we're going to be discussing how you need to protect yourself when you're out in the woods. Good morning, guys. I wish I could tell you that uh, last night was great. Um, it actually was. We had some good fire talk. We had a good time, but we did have an issue. Um, if you look at our camp, you'll see some picnic tables about 50 yards up. So as we're sitting by the fire last night, uh, we start seeing flashlights, a flashlight kind of bouncing through the woods up there. Um, so what we did is went ahead and intercepted that person up there uh, about 50 yards away and um, asked them what they were doing, what they needed. Uh, the gentleman was about 130 pounds, missing all his teeth. He said he was a hiker and uh, they were up there hiking. When you looked at his shoes, they were just slip on tennis shoes that were clean. Uh, his pants weren't buttoned. His fingernails were painted black and green. Um, just not a good looking dude. So once we asked him where he was hiking to, he gave us the name of a campground that was about an hour and a half away. So we asked him, we wanted to see if he was with other people because that's what you want to make sure. You don't have people coming from all sides. He said him and his wife were up in the woods and uh, she was cooking. So we told him the camp that he was looking for was about an hour and a half away. And since we are on the Air Force base, you need to have a permit. Not only do you need to have a permit, but you need to watch a video and take a quiz. He said he hadn't done any of that. So we just told him to be safe, have a good night and head on back. So at that point, that kind of put us on the ready for the rest of the night. So we came back to camp. About 20 minutes later, we see the light coming from a different direction. So once again, we're on the ready. We go running through the, the dark like Shinobi, um, and we approach him from all angles and ask what he's doing. This time, he was trying to get closer to camp, and he had a pencil and a pad. And he said, I just needed you guys to write down where I needed to get those permits. So we knew that he was just trying to scout our camp. He wanted to see our gear, see our equipment, see what he could come back and steal in the middle of the night. So again, we let him write everything down, told him to have a good night, and we sent him on his way. And of course he said, I was sorry, I didn't want to bother anybody, just needed that information. Uh, there was no need for that information at 10 o'clock at night. So anyway, about another 30 minutes goes by and we see the light again. Luckily, there's a long field of view. I mean, you can see pretty heavily into the forest. So at this point, we started getting closer and looking and you could see light from a tent, probably 300 yards through the woods. And um, this time we saw him coming back towards us. So this third time, he wasn't using any trail. He was just trying to come straight through the woods. So we intercepted him again, told him, hey man, you're scaring the chicks that are at, that are at the camp. Uh, we don't want you to come back to our area. Stay in your area. He told us he was sorry, but he was running from a black bear. So we knew that was horse shit. And at this point we said, you know what? Let's walk you back to your camp to make sure you're safe. Because at, we, we wanted to eye what was going on, how many people were over there to know if we needed to be worried that there were multiples gonna come and try to steal things in the night. At the same time, we were also calling the police. Bill is a flight paramedic and Deb is a 911 dispatcher. So they, you know, they knew the steps to do. So while they were calling the police, me and Bill was walking him back to camp. Um, so the dispatcher told us to stop uh, walking them to camp. So me and Bill turned around and uh, came back to camp. The cops arrived and they arrived heavy. There was um, one deputy and then four federal vehicles because again, this is Eglin Air Force Base land. So once they got here, we showed them where the location was and sure enough, um, it was a man and a woman. Uh, they had warrants, they had crack, fentanyl and heroin. So they got rid of the situation last night. Unfortunately, two of the officers ended up getting fentanyl poisoning and didn't make it out of the camp campground. You can see the road is there. So they didn't even make it out in their cars before they got tunnel vision and started going black. So those officers had to be transported to the emergency room. And then this morning, we'll show you some footage where 
um, the federal police came in and we had to show them where the, the location was again so that they could clean it up and make sure everything was safe. So when you're out here in the woods, guys, um, always have a means to protect yourself. Don't ever rely on someone else. Don't rely on a phone call. A phone call can be 10, 15, 20 minutes out. Um, you never know. So keep protection with you. Now, this is an Air Force base, so firearms are prohibited. You are not allowed to have a firearm on this base. So I'm getting ready to show you something that you can get uh, to keep yourself safe if you're not carrying a firearm. This is a Berna. It is a less than lethal option or a less lethal option. So you get this nice case. This Berna, I think, is around $299. So now it's CO2 fired. So that's what gives it the power. And you've got these, you can see here, they're balls that you load up into this magazine. And so you load them up. This is not considered a firearm. You can actually take this on a plane. So you've got all different kinds here. This is a kinetic ball, so it's just delivering blunt force. Um, this one here is a pepper ball. So that's gonna be a pepper spray when it hits them and explodes. And then this is the Max Projector. Um, the Max Projectiles have a mix of tear gas and pepper spray. So you can load this thing up and that is a less than lethal option. Um, so there's something for everybody. If you're, not a, if you're not a gun person, you don't like firearms and you don't wanna take someone's life, um, you do have this option. So if you're out here, don't rely on someone else to protect you, always have a means. I'm talking axes, machetes, hatchets, knives, anything you can keep on you at all times. Guys, this shit is crazy. It's crazy. I'd like to send a big thank you to the officers that came out and quickly, effectively, and safely got this situation handled. But please remember, it's no one's responsibility to keep you safe. It is your responsibility to keep you and everything you care about safe from harm. There's an old Chinese proverb that's always stuck out with me. It is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. So please remember that when you're out on the trails. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time, guys.